are in Kev. Kev, Mr. Come welcome back to Ride Free. Has last time out, we visited some 60s and 70s icons in the championship and actually did well for once on those bikes. But now we head to a modern phenomenon the Kawasaki Ninja ZX10R. History and evolution, a special volume for the first level has over a hundred years of history and research spacing from robotics to aerospace engineering in a word Kazaki. the GP said 900 is the founding father of a dynasty in which the Akashi based company channeled all the knowledge they had acquired in other fields the development focused on innovation and brought forward by men for which not even the sky was the limit men who decided to give shape and name to their ambition Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R pretty nifty intro as we have got seven races spanning as you can see around 30 years of Kawasaki Ninjas and we could win one of the newest ones of them, the ZX10RR for 2017, 766p pay. Let's get going. Let's first start, we've got a race round Donington. Actually, in this side, we've got a time attack round Donington. And the first bike we ride in the 1989 Kazaki GPZ900R Ninja, 345p p. The GPZ900 was the first Kazaki bike to be called Ninja. Recording the name of the fearsome Japanese warriors, this bike was equipped with an extremely sporty four-cylinder parallel 900cc engine. Riding, as per Kawasaki tradition, was characterized by a granite front end, gigantic front end, I think that's better to say, a genetic front end, I don't know. Perhaps not the fastest when changing direction, but it cut through the road like a blade. These characters made it a catapult bike to be tamed with experience and for this reason it's still loved by enthusiasts. So as we normally do we're giving ourselves three laps to be at a 134.3. The bike which is, seems pretty nifty. Might not nut the gear necessarily but boy, this can really motor and run ride through the crane of curbs. Into the old hairpin being very cautious on our first lap here. I think it's the full Donington experience we've got here. Already liking this bike already. There's no understeer. Or major understeer at least. There's always some. But it doesn't feel like it's anything major. It sticks to the tarmac like glue. And now here comes a bit of a test through the chicane. And I outbraked ourselves a bit, god damn it. So this might be a two star lap. I said we can beat a 37 3. Maybe not. I said we can get I said we can beat a 43 1. We're comfortable with that, but. Got some work to do to beat that 40, 34 free. And no, 35 8. So, actually, only a second and a half off despite a pretty terrible last couple of quarters. And going off track already, this that. That's not a promising start. again for 1.2 up so this actually might be it because I can't believe how smooth this bike is and of course we're coming from bikes from the late 60s with 500 cc power and not a lot of chassis to play with and maneuverability shall we say in the bike this that's incredible look at it shaking its booty on the brakes we don't even mind now if we nail these last couple corners we've definitely beaten our target i 
Let's get all the way down to first. No real wheel spin either. This thing's in like total control. Even losing the rear end there slightly. It's not too bad. As we rush towards the line, we got it. 32 9. What an absolute beast that bike is. I think that's up to second favourite. So actually, it might even be the favourite so far. As we begin successfully, five out of five stars. And then next up, it's the Ulster Grand Prix track. Oh, we had a good start. We had a good run. Now it's gone downhill. As the next car is up, it's the 1989 KZX. R750 320pp creates a replica of the bike that competed in the 1988 Superbike Championship. Kawasaki created this 750cc version that can be considered the oldest sift of the Kawasaki ZXR400. The engine has a parallel four cylinder 16 valve, liquid cooled engine powered by 36mm Kellin carburetors. The power output is 105 horsepower at 10,500 RPM, while the maximum torque is 66 newton meters at 9,000 RPM. The splendid white, green, blue livery that gives the ZXR750 an extreme and aggressive look also contributes to its success. And apparently, missed the pronouncing of names. I can't believe I saw a K there somewhere. We are gaining majorly on the leader, though. No! Oh, fuck off. So we are revving up then for our third attempt in a row at this. Can't believe in the previous two attempts, in the final lap, that same bloody left-hander, in second, chasing down first, we have crashed. Let's actually change it and be in the lead heading to that corner. Then you know we might just bounce off the fence or something. Like we're trying to bounce off the fence heading into first proper corner in the lead. Now let's try and race away from everyone. As that's the problem in the last attempt, I was racing away from everyone, then I made a mistake. So no mistakes this time. As I feel like we know this course now. We've had quite a few laps of practice now on board this bike ground here, so we should be able to do it as for the first time as well around this course, I had my first mistake free lap in that last race on the opening of that did it in four minutes, so that's the aim of this race to go under the four minute barrier I've also shortened the gear in slightly as well, being three steps back now from the far left because I feel like we're not really hitting our top speed. I feel like it can be even quicker. As you can see, we're not even hitting 150 when I feel like 150 should be the minimum top speed should be hitting at the end of straights. But we're struggling to hit it and we're still struggling to hit it, so I might need to shorten the game even more. It's just perplexing around such a fast course. That we, to be quicker, we have to keep sh shortening the gearing. So go dabbing it through the left. That's a deceptively tricky corner, that. Because you know those two right handers, you have to brake for them, you know that. But the left hander, it's kind of like, had the brakes and just go. Not that right hander. I keep confusing these right handers. I keep thinking it's that right hander where I have the brake when it's this one. I need to get down to third gear as well. We really killed the revs there. That's killed some momentum. It's maybe allowed the guys behind to catch up to us. So now we've got a right hand to come out. So we're still 1.7 in the lead. Maybe we shouldn't be worrying too much. But I always am when I hear a bike behind us. Let's get up to sit. Bit cautious breaking into that corner. Because maybe I was thinking of the left hander which come up, which is a proper hairpin. And like that. Here we go into it. Bit wide on entrance. We can carry much more speed into that corner.
And now that tight right hander downhill with the bumps as well. That is so tricky. But it seems like taking that wide line on exit seems to really help us accelerate from that corner. So it's partially not intentional and partially is as well, that line. It's all a bit off the line for the left. It's turned in way too late. Again, very slow through there. And now here we come up. We survived the left hander just. I probably need to actually get it down to second. Still keeping it in third. But we're completely opening that, and I think we've done it in under four minutes. Yes, 3.59, so that's goal number one already here as we've got a 2.6 second lead. That's complete the first lap and gone under four minutes. Now let's see if we can go maybe under 3.55 on this lap. It's the target. That's, oh my god, we're loving this bike around here. So I love this course when... I'm not an idiot around it. When you've got a bike like this as well. Just like that bike around Donington, it's so compliant to you. It's not like those six huge bikes, those legends of motorcycling, where they could just ride around with AI. They don't even care about you being on it. They don't like being ridden. It feels like, like they could just have their own races. They wouldn't mind being their own gated community. Just racing each other. This bike though, it's like, yeah, hop on board. I'll be your buddy. I'll be your friend on this cruise at almost 150 miles per hour around this Ulster Grand Prix track. You know, it brakes well. No real real spin on acceleration. It is just very controlled. Maybe too tame for some people, but for someone who's not very good. Really am liking this bike. Especially around a course like this as well, where it's got a couple very bumpy sections and braking zones. And acceleration zones where you could be very easy to break yourself on a more powerful bike. Or a bike that's just not working with you, that's a bit trickier to ride. Let's get up to sit for after that jump because he got a bit of a kick in rev range, so that's why I'm trying to put it into sit for the boost. Boost the speed there afterwards, but it didn't really work, did it? Because the revs were already kind of killed when we landed, but let's try a new scene. So 6.7 seconds up, so we're going for that's so almost four seconds in the lead. I think we're going for like a 352. So once again, braked way too much for that corner. I always think that corner's sharper than it is. Because I keep thinking it's this left-hander coming up. Oh, he actually got into as well. That was much better. And through the next corner too. Now into the hairpin. Again, taking that wide line. It feels like just taking that tight line for the apex with all those bumps, it's just going to push you wide anyway. It's actually just compromising so much speed, I think. As well. So there we go, that's much better. That's maybe gained us a couple of tenths. The previous lap. It's all a bit wide for the right. Now through the left. There we go, getting it all the way down to second. Just one corner to go, and then it is race over. And Ulster has been tamed by this Kazaki. And so I didn't get under 350. I didn't realize how close we were. 352-1. Absolutely crushed it, and over rank 100 as well. Rank 101. I know someone who approved that. Five stars. 
We are champion. We were, we were in this race. Third time lucky, they say, has... We win by 6.3 seconds in the end. Fast as that. Three and a half seconds faster than anyone else. That's how we're getting a hang of it now around Ulster. As next up, we're heading to a very familiar circuit, Laguna Seca. And we'll be on board a 1996 Kawasaki ZX7RR480PP. The 90s were distinguished by three quarter litres seeing their motorcycles. All the major brands produced the street versions of the bikes used in the Superbike Championships around the world. And in 1996, Kawasaki presented the ZX7RR, the latest move from the Japanese company. Made in two versions, the most extreme distinguished by the RR initials was capable of delivering 122 horsepower at 11,800 RPM, with a top speed of nearly 270 kilometers per hour. A respectable yield, especially considering the weight of the bike is 200 kilograms. Doug Chandler won two American National Championships on his bike. So you are looking down for another race. No. On to like Donington, where we're just by ourselves in time attack. We just enjoy riding these bikes and all these circuits. Instead, we're going to have to get the elbows out for three laps. As the top three already miles out of everyone else. Now you're on a corner. Or top four, should I say. As you bash away into fifth. I feel like that, that's what the racing is going to be like. I so, well, that's not a good sign on this bike. Audi feels a bit like the Ducati, if you remember from the introduction race around here. We had crazy inherent understeer. Guess what this Kawasaki has? It is not like the first two Kawasaki's. It's just so much joy to ride. It's going to be a bit more of a challenge. As we can't get it slowed down for the corkscrew, that's a good sign. Yeah, give us our four tenth of second penalty. What are you doing for? Breaking in the middle of a fast left hander. As we dive down the inside for a second. Oh, can we dive down the inside to the final corner? Just about make it stick. Let's go towards the line. Just about hold on to the lead. Well, that's not good enough if we're going to win this race. Especially if we're going to get hit like that as well. So yeah, this bike got crazy under this. So we're having the trail break heavily into all these corners so we can carry speed into the corners but then that just loses our speed on the exit this is not going to work out well is it uh, so we've got almost a good enough lead As we go up towards the corkscrew, let's see if we can get the braking done into here. Oh, we can! Then we get almost get taken out, which is nice. As we go through rainy. And penultimate corner accelerate nicely away. Now at the final corner, good acceleration. This is a good enough lead though. When we cross the line, it is. Okay. There is hope then. In this final lap. Let's accommodate this bike. So it was a bit different than that first bike round Donington where you expect it to perhaps be the same. Set for this bike, yeah, suspension is all the way to the left. But then the gearing is shorter, like a couple steps shorter. 
because of course the green is all about acceleration. Because there's only really that front stretch, which is, you know, where you're trying to get top speed. You kind of make it through the corkscrew. But everyone's on our tail now. We need a crazy good couple of corners. And also we've got the fast acceleration. Not heavy braking, just fast acceleration. As we go towards the line, we grab first. Yes, we built the gap up. Bloody hell, that was close. As we get five stars. And we won by less than two tenths in the end. Bloody hell, that was close with the Bomota SB8K and the Suzuki in third. So next up is some rain as we head to the Okiyama International Circuit. As now we're stepping into the 21st century and the 2004 Kazaki Ninja ZX10R645PP. We got some step up in performance as the revolution came in the early thousands through a stylistic and technological change that took Kazaki to a peak of Japanese production in one foul swoop. Presented in 2004, the K, the ZX10R Ninja was its new and glittering crown. Once again, the K and Z, you know, they're so similar looking. A bike of a true racing superbike power to weight ratio and weight the chassis do not drop tree. His acceleration and speedy cornering requires fantastic rider reflexes. Every stake will end up as a wheelie. That's great news. Let's see, we are looking for a rainy visor. As this should be an interesting race. The power to rate ratio of these things as you get underway. Try and do what we do in the MotoGP games. Get into second and midi and get a dreadful start as well. As you say now, we're up to sit. And someone just swooped round our outside. Now, now we're swooping down the inside into the left hander. Can't make it stick, but we're up to sit. I'll take that as well. Everyone's so in front. We had to take that line, otherwise we're going to be taking out everyone. Include the leader. Let's see how we break ourselves. Onto the back straight. And now we've got the shortest gear possible because for some reason the gear seems bought. Seems like it's just made for engine upgrades. So we've got the shortest gear possible. Or maybe it's just made for, you know, the road courses or the North Cypher. Don't seem to be made for circuits like this, which is the majority of the game. I just don't understand the gearing at all. So our we'll brake cells into the left. Gonna power. I remember we we're pretty good in this section. As almost losing on the front. You saw that. Front end was about to fall, but then we released the brakes. That's why we've raised stone upon ultimate corner. Try and dive down the inside for second. No, I'll break ourselves like an idiot. Got the power. Because with this gear, and if we get a bit of a toe, gear should be perfect heading into the braking zone. That's a bit wide for the right. You see the leader's getting away. We need to make this move quickly on second. No, you can't make it stick. Move through this section. Do they still slow? They do. So now we're right in the tail of the leader. Once again, we massively dive bomb into the right hander. We like that line where we go wide and get on the power early. So three tenths back, but we've got some slit stream halfway through this race. And he's the massive engine braking into the hairpin. Getting it all the way down to first. Seems to provide good exit. As what the hell is he doing? He's just braking in the middle of the circuit. And through the left, they go wide. 
Come on, can we get good acceleration? We do. Are we close enough for a move? We're close enough to let them know we're here. Almost used the rear gate on the power. Looking down the inside. Virtually beeping on at the leader. It's through the penultimate corner. That's way too much curbing. No, we could have made the move into the final corner. It's downhill. Gonna power early as he goes to the final lap. A very interesting race to do a 36 flat with half a tenth back into the first corner. God, the brakes are bad on this thing. It's just because of the conditions, but it feels like we've got great power, but not enough brake to make up for it to get this thing stopped in corners as well. We need a very slow. Make the move for first, actually get a braking right as well for the first time as oh, he sneaks by. But right in the toe for the back straight. Look at that tenth back. Oh, he's pulling away. Even with maximum acceleration. Do not understand that. So now we can dive to the inside. Block them. Force him wide. And now we can just take them line in the next straight. Break early into the left as he tries to make the move with the fan. Now we've gone wide. But we've got the inside into the right. Gonna power hard. As he fights back into the penultimate corner, we block the inside. Now the final corner, just got to get this right. Just blocked them a bit when we got on the power and I think we've held it until the line. Just. That was close. He was clenching when we got to the line as we get the five stars. And we win by just 32 thousands of a second as we set the fast up by country mile. So next up, it's the Algarve circuit. Three miles of undulation. And we evolved to the 2006 Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R 646PP. As with the new 2006 ZX-10R Ninja, Kawasaki softened the character of the beast a bit. If you, if you can say that about a bike that can still wheelie really in third gear. With this bike, they started to dominate competitions dedicated to a thousand sports bikes. The previous model aimed to be an emotional bike. This changed the formula with the aim of getting the fastest up on the track. So we are in sunny Portugal. Thank God for that. Racing in the rain is an absolutely dreadful experience now. With this new physics model. Don't know what the heck you've done, Milestone, but it feels like you just designed it for the dry. Uh, so let's actually take the proper first corner. So we're 3.1 ahead. We've gone to the back straight, rear end trying to get away. So remember, we've got to make a 3.1 second gap. So everyone behind. We're only two seconds up. Got to find another second somewhere. To go flat out through the left. And through the right. Use all the curbing. Put right into the next right. That's not too bad over the jump. And then you're braking for this tight right hander. Actually built the lead by four tenths there. I'll take that. And I'll take this. Just clean the track in front of us. No one trying to battle us. We can basically just enjoy ourselves here in the front. Just like we could in Donington. So now we're 1.7 ahead. So now we go through this fantastic final corner here. This right hander. From heaven. 
Gunner Pal so early. That's now, I've got gear in two clicks from the right. I hope that's not too short around it. Okay. We're at the limiter before the line. That's all we're 2.8 ahead. We'll get another second added to the penalty. So it's a bit wide. There's some dreadful riding. So I don't think we can actually do this. Oh, it says we're 5.2 ahead though. Even with a 4.2 penalty. We go through the double right. Do love this track. Such a challenge. Especially when going over jumps, full pelt. Well, not jumps, but going downhill like that. As we've lost six tenths, apparently, in that sector. We're 5.1 up. We're using extreme track limits here. As you can see, half the field in front of us. To the left there. As now we approach the final corner. This is our gain zone. So if we're still back like that, 3.9 back, we know through here. We can gain it all back if the bike doesn't understeer a ride, though. Never done that around the final corner. Normally you grip so instantly. As once again we get the limit to a country mile too early. Now only 4.9 up. Actually, that's good enough. I thought we were five seconds was the penalty. Let's go very wide through the right. That is not how you meant to take that section. At least you didn't get a cutting penalty for once. Let's go. This bike is even worse for the understeer compared to the last bike. And that last bike was racing in the wet. Do hate it. There's nothing I can really do with the settings either to get rid of it as we're only 3.9 ahead. Like I've done my basic dry set up which I don't seem to do anything really once again that front lift in as we break into the second right lost three seconds so just ahead of where we need to be, or just behind, should I say. It's all about this final sector. Look how nice and early. Downhill through this right. This is where we lose time. That's all, we're only 2.7 ahead. Got to get this right hander right. Once again, goes wide. Did not understand that. But do we understand victory? We are first. What? That's why our dreadful ride in that race. See, cheating does pay, kids. As we win by two seconds. So they lost. They were two seven point seven. They lost four seconds. Or three and a half seconds in that final sector. What the hell were they doing? Were they riding in reverse? As now we head to the stake at night. Are you kidding? And the 2016 Ninja ZX10 are 767 pp. The evolution that began in 2006 soon paid off with Kawasaki achieving top category production bike titles with impressive consistency, culminating with the new. ZX-10R Ninja 2016 designed to take Kawasaki's domination of the track to the next level and to achieve its goals perfectly. As the previous models were already the most successful, this model is not revolutionary, but a full evolution of all the components that improve 
track performance. This thing is a beast. So we are looking down at the digital dash at night here in America. As we rev it up and get underway for three laps. Are you kidding? This isn't like Okiyama or Elgarve. This is a road course. Not a short circuit. That's so ridiculous. Probably going to fall asleep by the end of this. How tiring it is. You get a fantastic run through the first tunnel up into seventh. You barely slow down for the second one. It's not been a great start though. Still down in seventh. Somewhere's into the back of sixth. Getting to the back of fifth under break, and because we're diving for the lead. Got a bit too excited though. To try and take second back. Robin elbows. Down the inside for the lead. Oh, we love this thing. We do not love the gearing though. Might really need to make that longer. Just one nine, three miles per hour, and it's topping out. Probably need to be two. Actually, probably needs to be just over 200, like 210. Final mile per hour as we've got a 6 10 for second lead. We've got the power through the left. Now through. Now this was flat out previously, but it wasn't a bike as powerful as this. Do not trust me flat out at all. Don't even trust myself through here. My god, that was the worst riding ever. How are we still leading this thing? How were we still leading this thing? How are we still leading this thing? Even clipping the dirt there. There's hello second. Taking a little look. And into the left, oh my god. The engine braking on this thing. I love it. I haven't got lead for brakes. Of the previous couple of bikes. This thing actually wants to let you ride it. It actually stop for you. And go around corners. It's amazing. It's maneuverable. I think that's the biggest difference. And so. But now we're going into where the snake really calls, so this is a good test. There's hello really. So, hello, wide corner. That corner's so deceptively tight. Like it's a bit flat out afterwards. That's why, well, what are you doing, second? Almost getting into us. Now getting into us. Going to the left. Way too impatient on the power. Should have been so much smoother. So now we've got a tight right, do we? Sounds like everyone was breaking hard behind. Let's see why. So he's got a fantastic exit heading into the hairpin. I like a break to early. We just about hold the lead as we go across the start finish line. Just about leave through the first corner, so 349 was that that. I'll try and beat that. There's through the first tunnel. Gonna to power almost too early there. And braked way too hard for the second tunnel. It's almost wide on the exit. I got a feeling if that was the previous bike, we would have crashed already like 10 times around that opening up and round five already on this lap. This bike is absolutely brilliant in everything it does. 
This might be my favourite Kawasaki so far, just because of the power. Braking, manoeuvrability, rideability, all the abilities. Doesn't even mind when I go wide. I feel safe. I feel like I'm in a cocoon. Has he got a 1.3 second lead? We're building a lead in this thing. Halfway through this race, that's the lift. Got the power. No, 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 wrong way. Do you never turn left? My God, we were chasing the bike for the next few corners there. Did not do that on the final lap. Because we have lost our lead now, I can hear them behind. Gonna power nice and early for the right though. Gonna power nice and early out of the left as well. Too nice into the right. And now the really tristy stuff. They're where we're probably just hanging on to these. So all that lead we've built up. We're about to lose it now. 1.2 ahead. Doesn't help when we break that early. Going to power too early as well out of corners. Sets of the tight left hander. Got really in everywhere as well. Which will help in, of course, acceleration out of corners. A bit wide there through the right. Oh, but nicely hooked up the left. Look at that switch back. Got on the power nice and early. Didn't play with the throttle. So you head to the end of the second lap. Bit wide there. Breaking a bit too deep. Now the final airpin. Felt like I braked a bit too early again, but got a power nice and early. We've got it just under a second. We go for the first corner, that was way too slow. We're going to the first tunnel. So we know the circuit by now. But I'll show you how ridiculous it is that this is a three lapper. Remember Ulster earlier? That was just a two lapper, wasn't it? And that's similar length time wise. Ulster is slightly longer, but still. Similar fat out circuits for the most part. Though also a bit more. I mean it has its tight corners as well, but yeah, I don't understand why we're doing this lap. Won't complain though if we end up at the lead of it. Like we are now. So that's too big a lift. Just needed a slight lift. Felt like we slowed down too much there. Should have just kept it in second instead of going all the way down to first. Isn't like this corner where we do need to go down to first. We've got a two second lead though. Again, feels like I just need to accelerate through those corners instead of having the slight lift in between them. Okay, don't turn left. Just think of turning right. There we go, that was much less scary. Very slow, but didn't have a heart attack in the middle. Which is always good, I've heard. I mean, you're not supposed to rack up the heart attacks during a race. I'm meant to not have one. So we've got around a minute and a half to go. Once again, need to do that later into that right-hander. 
But it shows how good this bike is, though, that I'm doing things too early on it compared to the previous bike, so I was perhaps doing them too late. Just that's how comfortable we are on this as we're 2.6 up. That's too good a lead, isn't it? I'm going to power slightly too early there. Now the deceptively tight left hander. So you're just keeping it in first seemed to be much better there. Despite the massive wheel on the exit. Taking our own line there. That was maybe legal in Europe, not over here though. In America, that line. Coming down nice and early. This last set feels really short now. And the first set felt really long. It shows how used we are to this circuit now. Now she's just got one corner to go. And then we're spraying ourselves with champagne. Or someone is. Let's go a bit wide. Don't mind that though. We go across the line. Another victory on a Kawasaki. Who would have thought that in this championship? Or this volume, should I say. That's rank 105. Eight stars. See, that extra that was three stars, I'm guessing. As uh, so you did the fastest that by around a second win by just under two seconds ahead of the Priya and Yamaha. So finally, we head back to Donington Park. And it looks like it's a time attack. Finally, again, we can just enjoy riding these bikes instead of having to battle. But I didn't really battle too much around the snake. Let's see what we do on the glorious British sun on a 2017 Kazaki Ninja ZX-10RR 766pp. The latest update of the Ninja ZX-10 comes after great success as the International Championships for factory derivative bikes, making racing changes to the series production model. For Kazaki, the R brief range always meant a bog homologation special, and it is so, for the Ninja ZX-10RR 2017, a comparison with its first member of this honourable family, the GPZ900R translate into a race against time at the daunting circuit where the technical characteristics and nature of the track give it free reign. Over all the bumps and grass and gravel and barriers, in my hands at least. Let's here we go on our rocket, to be a 126.4, normally give ourselves free laps to do this, but... If it's anything like the first Kawasaki, we'd do it in two. That's all a bit wide for Craners. That's a bit slow. Then into the old air bit. Oh, beautifully hooking it up in third. That's why this bike's too fast. I have to lift in airs I've never had to before around here. As we get all the way down the second, that's way too slow. Get a feeling this is a two star lap so far. Get a feeling it's going to be a one star lap, you know, if we're lucky. It's unfortunately scraped this thing. So maybe we do need, you know, extra couple of laps. That's us nicely through the chicane. And later when we do time attacks, it will be in first person like it was around Macau. I've just not got enough practice in first person because it's... Everything's so early, it feels like. As I outbreak myself. You know, tactically, because I want to get a good launch off the corner for the next lap. And we do get a star. Despite the crash. In for out of Redgate. God, do love this last bike and this bike as well, despite going wide through craners. And very wide for the old hairpin. Where are you going? How are we only a tenth slower? Oh, I guess we lost it all in. 
the crane is what we gained in red gate. It's again wide. Trying to push it a bit too hard, this lap. A bit smooth on the brakes as well. The right hander. Got the power nice and hard. We've got very short gear and like two steps from the right. Then our usual dry setup. So we're only 4.3 faster. Actually, that's good enough. I think. Sure, sometimes you don't go wide in the final corner. We would be very close. Oh, too cautious in the final corner. He's all the curb on the exit and we crossed the line. We've done it. So we did just need two laps. 26 1. What a fabulous bike. As so we've got Kazaki Passion. And here's our prize. Another Ninja ZX 10 RR Kazaki. Which we definitely want to ride. That's all we got something to put on the. on the shelf. You'll find you got a trophy to put there. Uh, so we've completed everything and it is the 2017 car so we just rode that we win. What a fantastic bike. Couple bikes to end it. Couple bikes to begin it with. The 90s and thousands bikes, not the biggest fans of, especially in the wet. But again, I think the things are just terrible in the wet anyway. Maybe because I can't set the bikes properly for the wet. I just got to learn that, but... Overall, loving the Kazakis, loving the special volume. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's going to be a longer episode. Definitely, it took ages to record because apart from the time attacks, which only took around five minutes, those other races took half an hour to get. Those guys thought, that's how difficult those races were, especially the wet ones. But I'll be back next time for level two. We're going up in the world. And the genesis of Sport 600s, the technical challenge of the first Super Sports. We'll find out what that is all about as we go faster next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.